My Family Thinks I'm Crazy, a podcast where I, your host, try to give you some tips on how you can explain all this weird, wild, crazy conspiracy stuff to the people you love most, because that's what I've been trying to do for the past 10 years with no success. I've been telling everybody that our government is shady, but every time I do, my family thinks I'm crazy. Like, oh, here we go, Mark. <laughs> Off again this with you. Mark being Mark again. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's the thing about podcasts is when you're on the air, and it's like therapy, you know? If I can't talk to my family about this stuff, I'll talk to you, Matt, and all our listeners. You know, just tell your whole podcast. Yeah. So who are we talking about today, Matt? to have you here i have i've had a, a, a musician on the show before who's helped me in a similar way the intro song to my podcast was created by a guy named destiny lab that's the name of his group his, his he goes by arc and arc and his homie neo have been on the podcast before 
and they have broke down a bunch of different conspiracies. Considering the content of the song you gave me, I got to imagine you're somewhat of a conspiracy theorist yourself. And I could have never guessed that based on the music I found initially because they're mostly instrumentals. So I, I think it's a pretty cool act of synchronicity that we linked up. Is that true? Are you a conspiratorial minded person, Luke? Well, I'd tell you what, like when I was younger, it was I was so into conspiracies that it like consumed my life. You know what I mean? I went a little off the deep end, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I was younger, in more recent years I haven't been as actively searching for those things. I got kids and stuff and I just I try to stay in the here and now for the most part. But I am aware, you know, like I got a third eye for stuff and I'm not I'm not blind to it. I don't deny it. You know what I mean? I'm just not as invested in unraveling things as I used to be. But I, I do have a decent bit of knowledge. Right on. Yeah, well, I could tell, like I said, you, the content of the song you sent me is pretty, it shows that you know what you're talking about. I mean, the one that stuck out to me, the reference that stuck out was the Stanley Meyer reference about the water cell car. And I don't think we've talked about that on the show before, but it's a big it's a big story that people run into when they start opening their mind to this world. But Luke, introduce yourself to the audience, brother, because I really got to give it up to you. Like I said earlier, before we started recording, you're doing a great thing. You're putting awesome music out there. Creators like me can come find that music and adapt it to their projects, whether they're a podcaster or whatever else they might need music for. And that's a rare thing. You know, it's hard to come by. A lot of, you know, the artists that I interacted with early on when I was trying to figure out, oh, how do I get good music for my podcast? You know, they were trying to charge me crazy amounts just for one download, for one song to have the rights to it. And then I realized like, oh, there's this thing called Creative Commons and there's these whole groups of artists who put out their music in CC 4.0. A lot of people don't know that, you know, they put their podcast together they find one song, they make an intro and they're done. You know, me, I try to put a new song in every episode and I can't do it without creative folks and really, you know, talented folks like yourself, brother. So please introduce yourself to the audience. Well, I go by Halizna on, you know, all the platforms I'm on right now. And what I do is I, I make creative commons music, which is music that can be shared and used in derivatory and commercial fashions, like without any type of repercussion. So most of my stuff I am uploading to a place called the Free Music Archive. And, and I upload it mostly as Creative Commons Zero, which means it's public domain. You can take it, you can resample it, you can put it in a video, in a podcast, you can rap over, you can do whatever you want. I'm just kind of giving it away. Now, I've been asking people for donations, some support here and there, and I have a Patreon for that. And on my Patreon, I have a whole other library of music, which is royalty-free, not exactly Creative Commons. There is a difference. It doesn't have the same license, but it's completely able to be used in the same capacity, basically, especially if you're working with me directly, if you wanted to use any of my stuff. Even some of my songs that I had, that are copyrighted like i can clear the copyright for somebody you know what i mean i'm really into seeing what people do with my music and i'm into being a part of people's creative experiences it's it's actually a really cool thing I, i've never experienced it before well yeah man i gotta give it up to you I, I don't know if you noticed but i've used the song that you sent me on the outro for every episode i've put out since you send it to me and uh, yeah it fits the vibe of the show and i noticed how much the first rap song that I had created for the show, because I'm not a rapper. I tried to rap. I assume you've been rapping for a while. I tried to rap when I was in high school and, and there's some MP3 floating around there somewhere with me on, you know, on a beat and my friend Andre, who's now a comedian, no longer a friend, but anyways, yeah, talented, man. I really loved it and it fits the vibe. It's hard to replicate that and i'm glad i was able to you know because I, I was thinking oh maybe i should reach back out to the same guy and get something fresh but this just kind of like worked out you know i i really didn't yeah it took me i think what like maybe 20 minutes to jot that down damn um, <laughs> managed to record it you know what i'm saying so it's not like that's what's really fun about this project for me is 
that, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big resource for other people, but I've been doing it for so long that it's just like, it's not really anything difficult for me. I can release, you know, 20 songs a day if I, if I had the time to, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, you deserve to be compensated if you're putting that much out there. So kudos to you, man, for making it public domain and, and even putting, you know, I, I don't think I'm completely clear still to this day on all the different levels of CC and what that all means. Maybe you can fill in some of the blanks, but it seems like it's a tricky situation. Like I could potentially get in some trouble if I use music that I'm not allowed to, you know, I don't have the license to and put it out on a podcast. And then next thing I know, my whole podcast is wiped from Spotify, Apple, you know, I'm, I, that's what I'm worried about. So having someone like yourself putting this music out there is extremely important and not just to me. I mean, I'm one of a million podcasters doing this kind of thing. Not everybody has the same style as my podcasts. Some podcasts, like I said earlier, only use an intro song, but at that, I mean, have you received any requests besides myself for like custom music for a podcast before? Well, uh, sort of. I had the one girl who's doing like a haunted podcast where she's going to go over different stories of hauntings and different supernatural events. And she really wanted to use music that sampled like, I don't know if you've heard any of like my really retro stuff that samples things that are like a hundred years old, the like, like, classical music jazz songs stuff like that and she wanted something that had like a spooky kind of creepy vibe but i was already doing that with my one project i was starting for halloween so so i just i gave it to i released it for her earlier but it wasn't exactly the same as what i did for yours i haven't had any experience with a podcaster besides you doing that yet so specifically anyway mm, right on well yeah and i i definitely am going to reach out with more ideas for sure and i'm sure other podcasters after they hear this will reach out but yeah i have heard some of those old school samples and that's something that i tried to bring to this podcast because i've always been a fan of underground rap music i always loved hearing like those odd unique like little sound clips and bites that guys would mix into their songs and i i really took inspiration from that and i've tried to make my podcast sound or reflect that in a way i don't go out of my way it's very difficult to find you know unique sound clips well, how do you do it do you have any like websites you go to do you just troll through youtube like what are your how do you how do you gather these sorts of things well i go i i go everywhere on the internet that has public domain stuff available so basically the way i started on this entire endeavor for creative commons because i wasn't aware of it either a year ago you know what I mean? This, this is a fairly recent thing for me. But the way it started was I wanted to put out an album on Spotify, a rap album. It's out, it's out now. I, I made music for it and stuff that di I didn't end up sampling. I ended up making my own music. It's called Be a Man. But I wanted to put that album out on Spotify and I needed music that would clear those copyright claims. And I wanted to sample because that's what hip hop to me is all about. Like originally like the reason people sampled in hip hop was because they you know it started in the ghettos and they couldn't afford the instruments and the equipment so like what they did to you know combat that and still be able to make music was like very innovative you know and we no one had done those kind of things before so for me sampling is like really important so that's how I found Free Music Archive. And I started by sampling a lot of stuff on there. But then I found, you know, a lot of really old historical stuff. And I was like, this is a lot more interesting. Like, this would make much more interesting hip-hop samples. They're really hard to use because the audio quality is so poor. But if you can get the right loop going with the right song, it definitely has like an old-school kind of hip-hop vibe. It reminds me of like something MF Doom would have done or something. You know what I mean? Something interesting and unique. Hmm. Yeah, I sense that with your music, man. I really like the most recent jazz one on your Patreon. I was checking that out. I think I mixed a couple of those songs in the episode that came out this past Monday with Little Raven, episode 178. And yeah, man, it's it's definitely a addicting thing when you go and you look for these like little like 
nuggets of gold that are waiting for you in public domain. I like to hit up the internet archive.org and just look for different speeches and stuff. I've found a couple of really awesome channels that have all these old coast to coast radio episodes. And that was great to dig through. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm curious to, to know how far this, this goes back. You know, how long have you been making music? Cause you said only a year ago, you found out about free music archive. What sparked the the journey initially? Well, like I said, I was making a rap album at the time. Basically, my buddy and I were just trying to figure out a way to turn my music. He's, he's sort of like my manager. He doesn't really do it as much anymore. But at the time, like, we just had nothing to do with ourselves. So we were, like, really attempting to make money creatively. We also started a publishing house. We write kids' books. We were doing all kinds of stuff. We were just trying to figure things out. So I wanted to put a rap album out on Spotify, see how hard it was to maintain that audience and find people. It is really hard, by the way. And I was also on YouTube trying to do, like, a lo-fi beat channel. Like, I was just trying everything at the time. You know what I mean? I was just seeing what would stick. Like, what kind of stuff do I like making that somebody – might pay for or I could monetize, you know what I mean? And then when I found the Free Music Archive, like it didn't even, at first I just put up this album I made when I was like 19 years old. It's called An Ocean in Outer Space and it's real weird. It's like this folk rock album. It used to have rap on it, but I got rid of all the rap because I was so bad at rapping back then. It's embarrassing. But uh, I put that album out on Free Music Archive just to see how people would respond. And then I saw that it had like, 40,000 plays and I was like well this is nuts like I can put us I put music out on SoundCloud and different places for years and it's never gotten this much attention so then I sort of started realizing like okay this is like the first place where my music has been in front of people who are actually going to listen to it or use it you know what I mean so I need to figure out how to turn this into something because I've never had that kind of engagement before yeah, absolutely. I remember I, it must have been either the hip hop category or like the electronic category. I came across your work on Free Music Archive and I always because they have two filters, only two. And I, I wish they would improve Free Music Archive on the front end because it seems pretty outdated. But they have two filters, newest and then they have most interesting, whatever that means. I think it's based on like how many clips clicks it gets or how many listens it gets and your stuff was at the top of the list a bunch of times at most interesting so i start finding like oh okay halizna is considered most interesting because i'm looking for good music and it, you know free music archive there's a lot of stuff on there you could go and listen to some wild stuff like uh, for a while like really out there music and yours was unique because a it was very listenable which is rare on free music archive depending on the category and it, and it's it fits like the vibe and i gotta ask you you know have you ever looked into like pittsburgh and the vibe there and like because you are in a very interesting place we've had past guests talk about the the sacred energy in pittsburgh it's on the 40th parallel which is significant and uh, yeah i don't know maybe this is you know out of left field question for you but what's the scene like there in pittsburgh do you think that had anything to do with your creative flow yeah i mean the people i grew up around like my generation specifically they were everybody was an artist and a musician and uh, it's definitely a thing for sure like I, I remember we used to pick on the football players like Football's so lame, man. Like you're not in the band, like you know what I mean. Uh, it was a very different kind of place to be. And all my friends listened to like underground hip hop and like you know stuff people had never heard of. Everyone was making their own music, listening to each other's music. And uh, my band was pretty popular in high school. And I was like the first time people ever paid attention to me as a human being, right? Where they noticed like, wow, this guy does something interesting and unique. He's pretty intelligent and well-spoken and and i think like my soul just attached right onto it and i was like this is who i am like this is what i'm doing with my life and ever since then uh yeah but this there's definitely uniqueness to pittsburgh i actually i still have yet to i want to listen to some of those podcasts you have about pittsburgh and ancient societies and stuff i believe that's what you were saying 
But because uh, Pittsburgh is a is a unique place, but I've really never heard any of that stuff before. Mm. Well, if I start telling you what I know off the top of my head, it might ring some bells. Like you, you're definitely familiar with the areas, but uh, what is it? The the fork where the rivers meet downtown in Pittsburgh. That apparently there's like a underground fountain. It's like a spring, a, a, a ancient spring underneath where they have this like pavilion and a park or something like that i've never been to pittsburgh i only visited there through the audio waves listening to podcasts but yeah my friend ross ben and mike juan are are the guys to go to when it comes to all the information on the mystical pennsylvania but they're more philly guys they're not quite out there in pittsburgh they only recently started talking about pittsburgh which is another reason why our meeting here is sort of strange for me because it's it just feels synchronistic like what are the odds that you know all this energy about pittsburgh starts arriving through my friend mike and then also you are from pittsburgh and you're creating this awesome music i don't mean to keep putting you on the pedestal here but let's talk about some of your musical influences you said underground rap things that most people have never heard of you got me intrigued. I consider myself sort of a, a connoisseur. I definitely am not an expert, but I, I can say, you know, Jedi Mind Tricks, Army of the Pharaohs, that whole crew was very much an inspiration for me. And then I sort of took a left turn and got into like Aesop Rock and, and things that are a little less, you know, piece together, I guess. I don't know. Aesop Rock is fantastic. He's just on another level. That guy has a crazy vocabulary. Right. <laughs> Understand though, for sure. Like you got to catch the vibe with a, with an artist like that. Cause you're not always going to understand right off the bat what the hell he's talking about. Mm. But yeah, he saw Brock is definitely one of those people blockhead specifically who produced all the early Aesop rock records. And I don't know if you checked out the latest Aesop rock album. I have seen it. It came up on my Spotify newest, like recent thing releases or whatever. I listened to it. Why? Their world. I think you'd love it, man. It's so good. Yeah, I didn't even give it enough time. I I just listened to one song and I was busy, so I kept on. Mo- but that was only two weeks ago. So this again, it's weird that the. <laughs> it's, a, it's a story concept album. You got to hear it front to back. It's an okay. hour long. Prepared for it, but. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's excellent. It's really like, I think the best description I've ever heard of what it's like to just be doing a lot of psychedelic drugs and maybe feeling a little unstable and feeling like, you know, like you've entered into a different dimension in reality and he does it in such a tangible way. Anyway, it's so good, but he's mm. definitely one. I love that abstract kind of stuff. I love when people are able to, to do something unique and new with music. And that's why I really ended up getting drawn to hip hop because it's the newest thing out still. I know it's it's old now technically, but it's still the most room for innovation in music, in my opinion. And people are still innovating it. You know, I don't always love all the newest innovations, but it is innovative. But I'd say like MF Doom is my absolute favorite. Metal Fingers is his DJ name and uh, his beats are just like, Something about them is so like simplistic and it's lo-fi. It's not, you know, it's not that overproduced stuff, but it's just got, and it's not like how most hip hop is where it's like soul or jazz. Like it it doesn't have a root in like a particular genre uh, like most hip hop does, especially from that era. But it's just like sampling all these old like cartoon soundtracks. And uh, it's just this very bizarre thing. He creates this little multiverse where he's he has several different characters in it. Anyway, yeah, I have a, I have a lot of most of my influences are are really overly hyper creative people because that's what really like draws me in. You know, hearing a a regular song about a love or you know being sad it it doesn't really do much for me to stimulate my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like. I like, I like people who are creating an entirely different world inside of their music. It's like this little matrix where vibes that you've never experienced exist in. And to me, that's like, it's like music is like a power like that. You know what I mean? Like you can really create a certain type of reality. And that's why it's so important to have as the background for movies and, you know, podcasts, stuff like that. 
because it really it, it really creates something out of nothing you know what i mean it's beautiful to me absolutely man well said yeah and i love your description of mf doom it's clear that that's somebody who spent a lot of time listening to i've always really appreciated the abstract nature of his music and i've always found a lot of the esoteric like occult references that a lot of those rappers in that world made mf doom was seemed a little bit light on that kind of stuff but uh, yeah that was always my draw because it was so weird and it, it f- rung true you know and music to your point you just made has that ability to sort of like loosen your barriers and allow for the message to come across in a way that it it wouldn't if you're just listening to dry audio i wonder if if i could find enough music if i could backtrack every podcast through the whole conversation i don't know if there's any podcasts that play music the that follows through the whole podcast at least not inter, interview style podcasts i don't know if that's a a thing but yeah i i'm wondering this might be a stupid question maybe i should just go and learn about it on wiki how to but what is lo-fi? Because I've been seeing this. It seems like kind of like a newer thing. It seems trending. Is lo-fi the result of music production being more readily available? Is that what that, like, is that why you see a lot of lo-fi beats out there and like more people have access to programs like Fruity Loops and all these other, you know, garage band type programs where you can just get in there and make your own beat tracks and sequences of, of you know, sounds and rhythms? Well, that would, that would explain why it's so oversaturated for sure. The lo-fi actually originally started out as like folk music and punk music. And lo-fi was a type of music that didn't have a high sonic quality to it. Like the purpose of the music wasn't meant to be beautiful. You know what I mean? It was meant to be raw. And uh, boom bap, like original hip hop, really did a lot of that. It wasn't it wasn't overly sonic, and that's that's where lo-fi came from. Today, lo-fi now has its own definition as like a specific type of vibe and sound, but lo-fi really can be used to describe all sorts of different music that have a low sonic quality. But lo-fi hip hop, the stuff that you see that's oversaturated. It's all like, I think it's driven by like a nostalgic vibe. It uses like complicated jazz chords, but very simple stripped back drums. And it is very easy to make. Like if you know how to play a keyboard and you know, you have access to Fruity Loops and you can put a drums in a drum sequencer and then add some distortion to them or something like I, that's something I was actually really glad that people on FMA were attracted to that music because I could make a hundred of those songs in a day. Like, they're, it's so easy to do. Well, and it is a certain vibe that I feel like people are trying to cultivate with their social media profiles. You see a lot of people make like these stories now with exactly what MF Doom sort of innovated, where you have like some weird gif of a cartoon sequence with like lo-fi music over it. I mean, that stuff is all over the internet. But yeah, man, I... I definitely am not musically mind in the sense that I can't play music very well, but I I try to, you know, I I think I have an ear for music and I try to find really unique music. Where would you suggest people go, you know, beyond free music archive? I mean, it seems like supporting artists is is kind of difficult these days. Spotify doesn't really give you a lot of (laughs) reward for putting your hard work on their platform. I have a friend who's in a, like a pop punk sort of alternative band and yeah, they're on Spotify, but you know, as far as the music scene goes, like where do you think like the next big spot is on the internet for music? Is there one? Is it just like a, a, you know, a bummer? It's not on the internet Mm. for creative music. It's so oversaturated and there is a lot of really good stuff out there, but the problem is nobody wants to innovate. Like they may innovate their style, but music is business too. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like, you can make music for yourself. That's what I've been doing for most of my life. It can be meditative and, you know, just good for your soul. But 
if you want to make changes in society and stuff, it, you have to follow the business trends too. And right now, I mean, nobody's really that nobody's really doing anything to make themselves stand out. And I was actually kind of proud of myself for the, the free music archive idea. I saw the kind of music that was on there. I was like, this stuff is mostly amateur. It's just people having fun, putting music up and people are grateful for it because it's free. And I was like, I could really stand out in this space. Like this is, this is a place where I could put out unique music and it could actually be heard because there's not very many people on there, especially in the CC zero category or even CC by that are doing things that are really usable. There's a lot of really good musicians on there in the categories where you're not allowed to use the music really. Right. Right. You can listen to the music, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. I'm, I feels like when I talk, we're not getting your audio. So if, if, if I do talk over you, I apologize. Cause I'm not able to hear what you're saying when I'm, when I start talking. So I'll do my best to let you finish. But yeah, I, I was disappointed by that. Cause a free music archive, really, it's not a good website to listen to music on is really a resource for someone like myself or a video, you know, someone in the film industry who's looking for, you know, quality music to adapt into their project. And yeah, I remember an exchange with a guy who was like, yeah, this is great music. You know, what are, what can you do for me? I'm a podcaster. I don't put a lot of money into my podcast yet. It's growing, you know, that kind of thing. And he's like, Psh, dude, I don't have time for you kind of attitude. And I was really, you know, disheartened. I'm like, damn, this is free music archive. You think there'd be more of a community and here you are, brother, dream come true. Now we got an actual artist on the show. It seems like full circle. I was wrong. That always happens. You always go into something with a negative impression and realize like it's more positive than you thought. That's why you can't judge a book by its cover. But yeah, I think Free Music Archive definitely has some improvements to make. Have you heard of IPFS? Have you seen any music being used on IPFS? I'm not aware, no. Well, let me tell you about it, because a friend of mine, someone who we've had on the show recently, I definitely have to get back in touch with them and, and work on this project. But IPFS is a new sort of way to host files, media on the Internet. You can create your own website. It's veritably free so long as you know how to do it. And yeah, you can, you know, have this guy has a whole radio station that he puts out on IPFS. So in the line of like reaching new people, it might not be the best way to reach new people, but as far as hosting content and getting it out there, you know, it's a, it's a new step in, in a different direction, but I'm with you. I think live music has a lot of potential still. I think it should be, should be supported, especially after the past two years. I mean, a lot of artists got hit hard, you know, and and even live podcasters, there's plenty of podcasts that go and do live shows now. I'm wondering where the gap could be bridged, you know? Would there be a day when, like, you go and see a concert and it, the opener is like a podcast? That, that would be interesting. I, I remember I used to, in my one band, we'd always have comedians open up for us. And that was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, combining mediums like that does make for a really good show. I think it would be cool to have a podcaster host a gig, like a, like sort of like a DJ, like an MC, you know what I mean? But not like a rapper, like a, a master of ceremonies. Mm. But I think having a podcaster actually host a show would be really interesting, as a matter of fact. Well, hey, you just put it out there. If there's any artists in the New England area that want this lovely golden voice of mine emceeing their show, please email me, mfticpodcast at gmail.com. That would be fun, especially if they pay me. I'll do it for free the first time, but <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, man. I, I think that's what needs to happen, and I'm really, again, encouraged by your presence and I hope you inspire more people to put music in those categories on free music archive, because, you know, there's a way to do it and there's a way to do it well. And I think what podcasters have innovated is this value for value model, where if you put something out, that's really good and worth appreciating it. You know, if it brings value to someone's life, there's a really high chance that that person is willing to bring some value back to your life in the form of a few dollars, maybe even in the form of a monthly subscription, like on your Patreon. Right. And so right. many podcasters are killing it on Patreon. I mean, you see like, especially the comedian podcasters are doing like, you know, 
six digit salaries, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars they're making on Patreon. So I think, uh, I think there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room for music. I, I've been telling my friends that have bands like, Hey, you should make a Patreon. You should do a podcast. Like there's a lot of room for people to, to mix it up. I know you probably spend a lot of time doing all the, the work that goes into making this music, but have you ever considered like mixing it together in some sort of podcast? Do you have like a, a message you'd like to speak into the world with your music or are you cool just putting the music out there? I'm not totally sure yet. I, I would love to come up with a concept for that because I know I need something to reach more people and podcasting is like, it's huge right now. It's really, it's taken off. I, I think it has a lot to do with like, what do they call web 4.0 where, you know, now it, there's less like in, in how old are you? 27. Okay. So you we're around this, I'm 31. So we're okay. sort of in generation. when we were, when we were growing up, the cult of celebrity was such a bigger deal. You know what I mean? Where like famous people were like godlike, and now you got stuff like TikTok. And even Instagram and smaller people have a celebrity status. And I think that's that's what is making podcasts work so well is because, you know, the, what do they call it? The zeitgeist for this time and place is is more about individual creativity than it is about celebrity worship. Not that celebrity worship isn't still huge and sometimes really toxic, but I think there's a lot more personal connection happening in the realm of creativity in the modern world. And that's why I think something like Patreon is really the new model for how to make a career as a creative person, because you need to be one-on-one -on -one with people. You need to be making connections. You don't need to be famous and have millions of people know you. You need 1000 people to be connected with you who are willing to support you for five bucks a month. And you got a, viable career path you know what i'm saying absolutely man i mean take it from me i found a career in podcasting just by being a huge fan of a podcast you know sam tripoli host of the tim fall hat podcast i met him at a show i gave him a book next thing i know i'm a guest on his show one thing leads to another now i work for him as his show booker and his podcast is miles light years ahead of my podcast at this point in time, who knows? Maybe somebody will be listening to this in the future and things will have changed. But hey, we're in the top 20 in the philosophy category in the United States. So we're doing well. But Sam, I always give it up to him. Sam Tripoli, he is my OG. And uh, yeah, it's it's really, you know, blossomed. He told me right away, like, you got to start a podcast. Because at that point in time, I didn't have a podcast. I had like a YouTube sort of show that never really went anywhere. And yeah, I told him, okay, I'll start a podcast. And he's said that to everybody. He always encourages everyone to start their own podcast because it's really not a competitive thing. I mean, music might be different, but with podcasting, we all swap cast with each other, you know, like instead of making enemies with another podcast, I make friends with them. I have them on my show. We talk and then both of our audiences are aware of what we do and that's just kind of the mutually beneficial circle jerk that we're all a part of, but it works. And, and I think that Sam and his sort of comedy group innovated that as well. A lot of people don't give comedians credit. They're kind of like the, the backbone of, of podcasting, but I, I feel like there's a big potential for musicians to steal the thunder in the podcasting world. Cause you see, podcast like uh, what is it there's one that like breaks down the 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 story behind a song and they'll have the artist on and they'll do an interview with the artist and it's like an npr podcast so they get big big musicians and then they have a podcast that was supposed to go through the top 50 rolling stone like the what they think is the top 100 best songs and i guess halfway through the podcast rolling stones changed the list and they ended up stopping the podcast or, or scrapping it or something. But yeah, I think, you know, if you put your mind to it, brother, whether it's like a, a radio sounding show or whatever it is, 
with the amount of music at your disposal and the fact, like you said earlier, you can burn out 20 in a day. I think you have a really kick ass podcast because a lot of people just listen to podcasts in the background while they're working. So, you know, I remember when I was an Amazon driver, I would go from podcast to music just so I wouldn't get burnt out on one podcast and stop a couple episodes in, listen to an album and then go back to the podcast, you know? So it's definitely a market for it. Yeah. My, my manager, who's really just my buddy, you know what I mean? He keeps telling me that like, I got to do something different, but what's, what's really difficult for me as a very creative person is like, I would have to, I'd have to come up with approach with an approach that really sat with me. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's, that's what's tough about me as a human being in general, I've found in my life so far is that really the, what interests me about things, I'll give you a, a I, I really like anime for instance. And, uh, but I've never found like community and like the anime community. Cause like, I really like, like the traditional, these folklore that, that anime is derived from. I like all the archetypes and what they mean for culture and society and other people are just like, don't you just, you know what I mean? Like they just, mm, they're into the flash, the superficial side of it. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like if I were to make a music podcast, I'd have to talk about what really intrigues me about music. And, and like I've told you, what really does intrigue me about music is and, and like creating different realities and like dimensions through what you're doing mm. to where you put on a record, it takes you to another place. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, you know, they, they're just, they're more passive with, with their interests and in, in music and in art in general, which yeah, I don't knock, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I would struggle to, to find common ground, but I think that's the beautiful thing about the internet is that you're going to find those people a lot easier for sure. Mm. You know what I mean? I'll Whereas tell you my, what. Help. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I think I have uh, my finger on the pulse of my audience and as we've discussed, the underground rap is definitely a part of the show. We've spent time talking about it on several different episodes. And even though anime is not my particular forte, I have watched several shows in my past. I don't really watch TV much anymore. I have noticed that there's a bunch of people in the audience that like anime. And I'm wondering, maybe there's a, a way for you to do a podcast that includes all the things that you like. And it, you know, what would make it more unique is not many people are as talented at making music as you. And then also doing a podcast <laughs> that has all their own music mixed in. So I don't know, just a thing, just a thought. I'm also the kind of guy who tries to talk everybody into a podcast. So <laughs> keep that in mind. I got you as a guest. So <laughs> now I'd love to, at some point, like I said, I got to really, I got to really mull it over in my mind and, and think about what I really want to discuss. Cause I would love to find a, a, you know, my own creative community of people who were interested in, viewing life in a similar way that I am. Because like I said, like art is, art is one of those things that everybody enjoys differently. You mm. know what I mean? And I've just found my particular enjoyment of art is a lot different than, than most people's. So uh, it would be really cool to find those people and be able to engage with them though. No doubt. Yeah. Like, let me, ask, you said you, you're, you're listed as a, cause I, I struggled to, to pinpoint exactly what your podcast is when I linked you on, free music archive, but it's a philosophy podcast. So like what sort of philosophy do you subscribe to? That's a great question. Well, I, I should admit the, the philosophy category seemed the most appropriate compared to all the others. And that's just Apple. Every other app, every other podcast app doesn't really do the category thing. But yeah, it is cool to see where we're ranked. And I'm happy that I chose the philosophy category because there's not as many podcasts in the philosophy category. So we tend to rank higher. And the word philosophy just means a love of thinking. You know, it's a sort of, if you break down the word of it, it's a, it's a love of wisdom, a love of knowledge. And, and that's really what this show aims to do is, is learn in an open-minded way because I've always attempted to learn as much as I can about the things that I've been interested in 
And as soon as I learn something, I want to tell everybody about it. So when I started learning about, you know, the healing powers of cannabis or like the benefits of eating an organic diet, my family thought I was fucking nuts. They're like, you're being a, a hippie, you're being a, a druggie, you know, all these like weird things that they thought I was doing. Sorry about that. His girlfriend's sure. making all kinds of noise over there. But yeah, so I guess that's that's the that's the explanation for the philosophy category. But if I had to like at like really like categorize my own personal beliefs into a philosophy, I would say that I'm an idealist. I believe in idealism. And that's a difficult philosophy to explain, but if people are interested in learning more about idealism, I would say a google it b read the secret history of the world by mark booth and why i recommend that book is because it was the most life-changing book i've ever read it shows you the history of the world but from a spiritual perspective and it shows you the spiritual aspect to historical events that i only learned about through school as having a materialist interpretation they tell you like who died why they fought this war what the you know what they were trading you know the, the basics this book gets into like oh well you know not only did this guy invent this thing but he was seeing angels when he invented it or this woman you know saw this great prophecy and that's what started the war you know these are the things that history either leaves out or they dogmatize they religiousize them so much that they lose their meaning and truly i believe that there is like a not one truth but many roads to the same truth and we can understand our history in that way because we're all one human being you know we're all connected with our mother earth so even though when you go and you dive into this category classified history where everything has its own subdivision and it's all so compartmentalized that it's hard to see the full comprehensive view i think there is a full comprehensive view i think i could pull that away from even history and and talk more modernly mm. about psychology which i think has become like a religion you know what i mean where it's it's you know, like the really the the founder for modern psychology was Carl Jung, and that guy was spiritual as as a cast, cat cuss. I don't know. Is that yeah. absolutely yeah, brother? All right, Carl Jung was spiritual as fuck. You know what I mean? And a lot of people have forgotten that, like a lot of what modern psychology. I mean, there was Freud. Carl Jung was his predecessor, but he. Carl Jung was a very religious man. A lot of his, a lot of people think that he was himself schizophrenic and that he was seeing a lot of his ideas and visions. And, you know, now with modern psychology, it's been broken down into such a truth of like, like this is what a mentally ill person is. And you know what I mean? Absolutely. We lose all of the abstract understanding of it, of where it really comes from, which was from, what modern people would describe as a mentally ill person. You know what I mean? Not that psychology doesn't have its, its place to really help people. You know what I mean? But when you look at it like an absolute truth, I just think it's so close minded and it fascinates me that everybody is so t honed into this kind of thing. Well, yeah, and I, my, my philosophy, my philosophy is called absurdism. Are you familiar with absurdism? Yeah, I am. A sl relatively familiar but explain please for those who are not so the person you got to read would be albert camus especially the myth of sisyphus uh if you're interested in philosophy but what i take from absurdism is that you know i started out very nihilistic i had kind of a a rough couple years in my life i saw a lot of really bad things happen to people and uh, i got real nihilistic about you know life has no meaning there's no god there's know anything we're just you know in this vacuum of bullshit and absurdism is a similar concept but for me as a creative person what draws me to it is that nothing has inherent meaning but when we apply meaning to something we give it meaning you know what i mean that's truly what divinity comes from so like for instance, my family is very religious. That's why they think I'm crazy because I'm more agnostic and I, I've always been open, especially to Eastern beliefs and stuff. And uh, like, 
how do I explain this? So you're, like you're speaking I, my language. I hear you, but keep going, please. <laughs> like what religion does for my family. It really does create a sense of stability. And I see why they feel it's so absolute. But I believe it's because when you give something meaning like that in your life, it manifests in a divine way. And only conscious life forms are like capable of this kind of understanding. And, you know, I think we are the meaning in the universe. You know what I mean? So whatever we say has meaning just kind of does have meaning and it's absurd. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but your point about, you know, your idealism being a little more spiritually based. Have you heard about Pythagoras? Yeah. My buddy Juan, who I do a show with loves Pythagoras. He talks about Pythagoras all the time. I was just reading about Pythagoras just the other day. And I never realized how mystical the man really was. And like, so the story is that he was trying to get into this school of thought further east. I can't remember exactly where it was, but they wouldn't let him in because he didn't follow spiritual guidelines. And he said, I'm, I'm not here for spiritualism. Like I'm, I'm here for knowledge. You know what I mean? And they just wouldn't let him in unless he did certain things, which were these breathing exercises and meditations and stuff. And after he had completed all of the meditations and breathing exercises, he came back and said, you know, that he was completely wrong, you know, that there's more to life than just knowledge. There is a sense of living life that is lost in the pursuit of knowledge. And there needs to be this balance between the two. And I, I plan on reading a lot more about Pythagoras because that entire story really interested me. Yeah, no doubt, man. I just looked it up briefly, as I usually do during the interviews on Wikipedia, and it said that, and Wikipedia, take that for what it's worth, you know. It is censored to some degree, but it is an encyclopedia, so we got to take it with a grain of salt. But they said that Pythagoras has been claimed by Greek thinkers to have studied in Egypt, but also said something about him studying from some mystics from India as well. So, yeah. You're right on the money with that, man. I've learned about Pythagoras through that book I mentioned earlier. Initially, I'd heard about him in school like many of us do, but just the watered down version of him. And yeah, it's it's quite profound. You find out that a lot of his sacred geometry is resembled or I'm sorry, heard most by the Freemasons, right? You see this in their emblems. You see this in their architecture. They use a lot of the sacred mathematics that Pythagoras used. And, and the Freemasons, they get beat up like a punching bag. You know, they're not the only secret society. There's a whole bunch of others. But, but yeah, I definitely have been studying tangential subjects, mystery schools, specifically the ones that have made their way into the United States through our colleges universities but yeah that's where it starts with egypt they had the mystery schools that's where pythagoras and all the other guys went and they started their own mystery schools in greece and then when the universities in america started up they all they had to teach the students was old testament and greek and roman classics so they all were like okay let's start our own secret societies and now you have all these secret societies that start popping up here in america skull and bones and and all the rest but yeah, man. Absurdism is definitely interesting. Have you have you looked into it beyond, what is it, Alfred Camus, you said, or Albert Camus? That's really, I mean, he was the, the founder of it. I've read a few other things, but nothing that I can really recall. The myth of Sisyphus is really my foundation for my concept of absurdism, but I, I'm not real familiar with any of the other philosophers who would be in that category. Mm. Yeah. And, and for people who haven't heard of Sisyphus before, you've probably heard of the sort of concept, which is Zeus punished him for cheating death and forced him to roll an immense boulder up a hill for only for it to roll down every time. And he just had to keep on rolling this up a hill. I think there's a like a Metallica song or something that talks about this Sisyphus. Maybe it's a different band. I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely in the in the culture. What does the Sisyphus story say to you? What what where do you draw meaning from it? Well, so basically Sisyphus was punished, right? To roll the stone up the hill. And Camus basically puts forward that it wasn't a punishment. 
that that Sisyphus is somewhat of a hero for continuing to roll the stone. And the way I applied it to myself was that, you know, it felt like at a certain point in my life that being alive, and a lot of people will say this, like in a very low key kind of way, they'll say that uh, life is suffering and life is pain and, you know, life just sucks and you die. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what Sisyphus was doing. He was suffering, you know, with a task like that. But when you apply meaning to it, like life, it doesn't have to be suffering when you apply meaning, you know what I mean? And that is what absurdism is all about. And the thing that will give you meaning is absurd. It won't make any sense. Religion does not really make a lot of sense. Belief in something you haven't seen, it has to be a personal thing. You know what I mean? It has to be a personal experience, no matter what you believe. You know what I mean? And that's uh, that's really what Sisyphus and the myth of Sisyphus really laid down for my foundation of understanding that type of philosophy. Well said, man. Yeah. And it is interesting. You know, people often don't even realize the difference between the objective and the subjective. And they sort of conflate the two and... You know, people are often so confused by religion that they just get frustrated if anybody questions anything close to what they've been taught and then the conversation drops dead. But you said your family thinks you're crazy for being pretty, you know, agnostic or secular, for lack of a better word. Are there any other reasons why your family thinks you're crazy? How do you get down, Luke? Like, what do you what do you do in a given week when you're not making music? Music is pretty much all that I do, really. I mean, you know, it's philosophy, knowledge, that really drives a very religious person, kind of makes them uncomfortable, you know what I mean? So, you know, my family, I, I sort of err on a, a side of caution with them where, you know, I maintain a relationship because, you know, like in the hierarchy of needs, stuff like that is important. So I kind of keep it low key with them, but they're like so religious, you know, like everything that I do that doesn't lead me to Christ is going to be something they think makes me kind of crazy. Dating a girl with tattoos, for instance, would be one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Like anything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. My girlfriend has tattoos and I'm a little, I'm lucky people in New England don't really care much about tattoos. We're pretty liberal out here. I know in Pennsylvania can be a little rural at times. I got my buddy, Mike, he's out near, he's in like Lancaster County. And I was just talking to him on the phone last night and he was telling me about this Amish farm. He was walking by and it's a trip, man. Pennsylvania is a beautiful state. I definitely want to make my way down there real soon. I'm going to go visit him in Lancaster, but I got to ask you, man, I want to bring it back to music. I know we're coming close on the hour here. We'll probably wrap it up soon, but I want to ask you, like when it comes to your music, you got a wide variety. And for people who aren't aware, it's all free to check out on free music archive. You can go there and listen to it. You can download the music, put it in your phone, play it in your car, wherever you listen to music. He's also got, you know, exclusive music on his band camp and the Patreon that you can access if you support. But you'd have like a wide variety. I'll say I found like meditation tracks on there. I found, as you were saying before, some lo-fi, some rap. There's not a lot of stuff where you're rapping yourself. Where could people go to find that? And then second question, what are some you know, maybe unique projects that you've worked on that you're really proud of. I mean, the meditation thing, that's totally, it kind of like goes in a different line. You know, people could just go and download that and fall asleep to it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you wanted to find my rap, I'm on, you can, you know, search my name. I'm on Spotify. I have an album up on there and a single. Uh, I've had a few rap albums out, but I ended up deleting most of them because none of them were copyright safe. It all sampled you know, old 60s and 70s stuff. But, you know, to, to bring it back to what we were discussing and how it relates to music is a lot of my friends are kind of blown away by the fact that, because all my friends are musicians, but they're very genre specific. You know what I mean? And I can do all these different types of music. And it's, and the reason I can do them well, I think, you know, personally, or at least what makes me engage with it well, is because of my absurdist philosophy. Like I can sit there, 
And I'm not like stuck as any kind of person. I'm not stuck as a rapper or, you know, like when I'm making something, I am the kind of person that makes that music. You know what I mean? Whether it's classical music or hip hop or grunge, punk, like any of it, like I get into this type of creative space where I'm not just doing this to show somebody like, look what I can do. It's like, I become that person for the time that I am creating it. You know what I mean? But I think most of my projects are, are out in the open. I, I, I want to make a new album. You like, that's not copyright safe, but you know, there's just no way to release it to anybody, but my friends. And I put some stuff on Patreon that you might've seen. But yeah, right now I'm, I'm really focusing on servicing the creative community and seeing other people be able to, use my music in a way that adds to what they're doing. That's really what's given me my fulfillment right now as an artist. Right on. Yeah. And those are really sick. I checked a couple of them out and it's just sort of use at your own risk, I guess. But yeah, I would say go ahead and use IPFS. It's kind of like pirate radio, put it out there on IPFS and nobody can stop you from sharing whatever you want on IPFS and anybody can take the link and, and listen to it. And yeah, even if it's just your friends, it's still cool to have. So I definitely encourage you to do that. I'll certainly share it on my podcast and my website and all that. It's really cool to take a look inside of your head and, and see where this music is coming from. I, I definitely want to learn more about absurdism. I feel like I'm already pretty absurd, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like I like you're ringing true to everything I've kind of lived as you described that. <laughs> I think everyone's absurd. I think anyone who is a person is absurd. I think being a person is absurd. Being a human and playing the games that we play, sitting in traffic, all of it's absurd. And absurdism just gives you a perspective into it that makes it feel important instead of meaningless. Mm. Well said, man. Well, hey, this has been fun, dude. I appreciate getting to know you, and I hope everybody goes out. And even if you don't have a podcast, go and check out Lou Kalisna's music. You can find it on Bandcamp. You can find it on Patreon. And you can find it on Free Music Archive. There's all kinds of great music there as well, and uh, Spotify. But please send me all the links because I don't want to leave anything out. And uh, Yeah, yeah. Any final thoughts to leave with the, the listeners before we go, brother? Just a final thought for you. I did I did record four new tracks for you. Oh, uh, they're shit. They're not rap, but they, they could be. They're beats right now, but they're sci-fi, sort of spacey. I based it off of the stuff that you used from Soundstripe that I had seen on the one video. Okay. So uh, just so you know, I'm going to be putting that stuff up pretty soon for you. Right on. All right. Well, cool. So that's that. I was hoping we could talk a little bit about that after we're done recording but for everyone listening thank you so much for being here and have a great moment wherever you are in the now and that's the podcast folks thank you for tuning in thank you for being here and what an episode luke halizna shout out to him he is a big help i can't put together a show that sounds as cool as this one does without amazing artists like himself putting his music out there for free anyone can use it and go and support the man he's got a patreon he's got a band camp and of course his music is available on the free music archive so support him you heard his original song at the beginning of this podcast after our traditional intro song and you're about to hear the outro song that i've been using lately and that was also made by luke so thank you so much luke and i hope this uh helps you reach some new people and podcasters listening don't be shy you know i really don't feel like i own any of the music that i use in the podcast so you know don't feel like you're um you know not allowed to use it just because i do right and luke has a wide variety of music so you know you're pro you're probably gonna find something that i don't like or maybe you won't like the things that i picked or you know maybe it's not about liking or not liking but it's more about what fits and yeah his music fits really well into the podcast that i create and no surprise his uh philosophy fits well <laughs> and that's why we had him on the show as a guest so 
If you make music out there, don't be shy. I'm not exclusive to one artist. I'd love to include as many musicians as I can. It's just up to you, you know, whether or not you categorize your music with this type of license, CC 4.0. Uh, you can see in the episode description of every episode the names of the songs and the names of the artists. And if you go to the Free Music Archive or Spotify or any other place to find music, there's a good chance that you will find those songs. So yeah, definitely a privilege to be able to use this awesome music on this podcast. And I could be more grateful to everyone who tunes in and enjoys it. So if you do, please keep this train rolling. Support the show with a one-time donation. Incredible, incredible support from a JT Shout out to you, brother. I really appreciate it. Brother, hook me up with a, a $500 donation. I mean, this is unprecedented and, and really kind. And uh, yeah, he deserves a shout out. So shout out to you, John. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And of course, maybe you can top that. Somebody listening out there, the bar has been set. It's been raised pretty high. And even if you can't, go above 500 please don't be shy help us out with a one-time donation cash app venmo paypal cash app seems to be the best they have the least transaction fees so if you're worried about getting it to me in the most efficient way seems like cash app is the winner but of course i'd like you to get something out of it uh, aside from this awesome podcast that i put out for free so I have the Patreon, which is loaded with bonus audio content for all you audio heads listening out there. You might run through all 180 something episodes of the My Family Thinks I'm Crazy podcast and say to yourself, geez, I need some more. And who knows, maybe you listen to this in the future and there are hundreds more than there are uh, currently on June 30th, 2022, the day of this recording. So the Patreon is the best place to go. We have some original, original content from way before the podcast really even took off. And also we have a bonus show that I do for Illuminati Confirmed. I have a bonus show where I look into my tabs and see what I've been researching lately and share it with you guys. Uh, and I also give spirit animal names to anybody who signs up for the Patreon. Your spirit animal name is Divined. And you can use it in the Telegram. That's right. You'll get a admin status in the Telegram. So sign up on Telegram, join in the community, and of course, support our guests, Lou Kalisna and everyone else who takes part in this show. As for now, enjoy the moment wherever you are in the now. I'm a little extra terrestrial, trying to stay human in a cesspool of professionals. But I confess too much off of the tongue. All my aunties and my uncles shield the ears of the young. I be saying shit and they don't know where it's coming from. In like a hundred years, we went saw a bomb with guns. Check the facts, check the Fed, check the stars. Standing minds was murked for a water fuel cell car. They each they own, you can stick with your old ways. But eat the rich and drink the motherfucking Kool Aid. And I can see the red on your lip stain. White skin, blue collar, pure American made. Fuck it. You can keep your blood so heritage And run the soul off the moon and narrative Yeah, my girl thinks that I'm embarrassing My folks think I'm nuts but never question the parenting Stuck in bed so my boss thinks I'm lazy Connecting dots but it's all kinda hazy Good morning in the net feeling like I'm Dick Tracy My pack thinks I'm on American and shady Yeah I'm feeling unhinged lately Encounters of the fifth kind on the daily You could tell me that the president's an alien It wouldn't faze me My family thinks I'm crazy Baby, baby, baby My family thinks I'm crazy Baby, baby, baby You might think that I'm off in the deep end One too many Netflix docs on the weekends But check the budget for a military defense Tell me we ain't scared of something not within reason Steel beams, another 1492. And 9 11 was the red, white, and blue. And you be lit off the floor, and ain't got a clue. All your dreams just shit on a Rockefeller shoes. Don't believe a damn thing a politician ever said. Ain't one brick left to go up in the Fed. They still got bricks of cocaine to make crack. Oxy's killing the working class, FDA's whack. 
Talking like this, got kin talking behind backs. Too much to unpack, so they talk smack. And I'm just trying to converse with my clan, but it ain't fan. So I'm here setting up camp. Stuck in bed, so my boss thinks I'm lazy. Connecting dots, but it's all kind of hazy. Good morning in the net, feeling like I'm Dick Tracy. My pack thinks I'm on American and shady. Yeah, I'm feeling unhinged lately. Encounters of the fifth kind on the daily. You could tell me that the president's an alien and it wouldn't phase me. My family thinks some crazy. Baby, baby, baby. My family thinks I'm crazy. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just maybe. Stuck in bed so my boss thinks I'm lazy. And if it dies, what it's all kind of hazy. Good morning, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Like I'm baby, Dick Tracy. My yeah. pap thinks I'm on American and shady. Baby, I'm baby, feeling unhinged lately. The counters are the fifth kind on the day. So you can tell me that the president's an atheist and it wouldn't phase me. My family thinks I'm crazy. Anything out. 